Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, many of you have asked me to do a, a sort of a simplified, quicker version of uh, the interview with Professor Robert Clancy, who's invented basically a new immunobiotic, a new way of giving immunity protection that's not vaccination. He's developed this new idea over many years now. Now, what this basically consists of is all the time we're coughing up bacteria and then we swallow these bacteria. So the bacteria we cough up, we swallow them, they go through the stomach, they go into the small intestine. And in the small intestine, there's immune tissue, lymphoid tissue called pears patches. They take up these bacteria and then they send messages in the form of T cells to the lungs. And these T cells, when they get to the lungs, that stimulates the lungs to make immunity. And this is a big reason why some people got sick with COVID and some people had asymptomatic disease. The level of immunity that's been conferred to their upper airways as a result of this feedback from the gastrointestinal tract from the small intestine primarily. So what Professor Clancy has done is he's developed a way to augment this. And the idea being that everyone would have this high level of protection, not just some people who were fortunate and this would protect people from exacerbations of chronic bronchitis and emphysema and the coughing and the phlegm. And we also believe it's going to protect us from severe disease for people that get COVID in the future or a new form of coronavirus or influenza or a new pandemic of influenza, which of course is going to come. This could provide great levels of protection by enhancing a natural physiological system. It's a simple tablet you would take. It's not a vaccine. It's just an immune stimulant to develop natural immunity that's in the lungs already. So that's basically what this is about. Quite fascinating. It's got the concept to revolutionise huge aspects of respiratory medicine, in my view, uh, potentially save millions of lives. And if there's another respiratory virus pandemic, which there's almost certainly going to be, whether that's a coronavirus or an influenza, save untold lives into the future. Such a simple development could be sold over the counter. Needless to say, uh, certain sectors of the pharmaceutical industry might not be that keen on this new development, but you and me are because it's going to prevent human pain, suffering and death. That's what this video is about. Um, I don't know how long it will take me to explain it, probably about 20 minutes. Um, but if you want to understand it, I'm going to give it my best shot starting now. Now, this is the paper here. Now, it's not yet actually published in the journal Vaccine yet. Should be shortly. We're just grateful that Professor Clancy gave us a basically first, first shout of this. This is basically being announced to the public before it's getting into the academic press, although it is based on established academic uh, principles. So uh, more references to come on that pretty soon. But try and follow the physiology. Quite fascinating physiology. Now, we're going to start off looking at the, uh, this is this is your head sliced down the middle. So this is your nose here. This is where the eyes will be, brain up here. So, of course, what happens is, this is the airways here. This is the trachea here. And this, of course, goes down to the, uh, goes down to the lungs, as we know. The, the lungs will be down here, um, like this. Um, so we cough up sputum. And this sputum's coughed up, and it goes into the back of the throat here into this area called the oropharynx and then we most of the time well sometimes we spit it out but most of the time we just swallow it and it goes down this pipe here which is the esophagus taking it down into the stomach so i think we all can relate to that and of course any bacteria that happen to be in this mucus naturally uh, they will be coughed up and they will be swallowed as well now, the lungs themselves, and these diagrams are all from my physiology book, which I'll put the link in free for, for free download. The lungs themselves, as you probably know, um, that they, they branch down into progressively, uh, progressively smaller airways. That's the right lung. So it's going to it's going to divide basically into three, uh, three, three segments like this, um, going to progressively smaller airways. That's the left lung so it's going to divide into two main ones and they're going to subdivide of course into into many more what we call um the main bronchi and the, the lobar bronchi and these divide further down into what we call segmental bronchi so we have this basically it's like an upside down tree as air is taken to all parts of the lung and this that you can see here this on a larger scale this is all what we will call the upper airway the main bronchial passages the upper airway 
No, um, stick with it, the, because th- these eventually go down to smaller and smaller air sacs, which of course are the uh, the alveoli, millions of them or all around the all around the lungs, the small air sacs where the oxygen actually goes in and the carbon dioxide actually goes uh, out, and and they all look uh, like this. So here we have the uh, the terminal bronchi. So the, these terminal bronchi here, this is on a microscopic scale now. These are the very end parts of these tubes. So they break down into a terminal bronchi, and then there's these alveolus, uh, the, the the air sacs here, and the, they end up in these very small air sacs. And the thing about these is they're very thin. So the oxygen can get into the blood, and the carbon dioxide can get from the blood, uh, the blood into the uh, alveoli to be breathed out. So we have the upper airway and the uh, lower airway. Now the thing about severe disease, when someone's become systemically ill, that's because the bacteria get uh, from the alveoli into the blood or the viruses get into the blood. Uh, The upper airway here, the the, the bacteria aren't really going to get significantly into the blood from up here. They can to a degree, but not significantly because the walls of this are simply too thick. These are thicker walls. Whereas um, lower down the walls are necessarily thin, just one cell thick, in fact, with a thin basement membrane to allow the gaseous exchange to occur. So if the infection gets down here, for example, in uh, acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome, the alveoli fill up with fluid. This is what happened to people who got very sick with COVID very often with a respiratory presentation. And of course, if they filled up with fluid, uh, the oxygen can't get to the blood and the carbon dioxide can't get back, so the patient's basically uh, drowned. So that's what normally happens, the upper airway and the lower airway. Now, this is the uh, gastrointestinal tract here that we all know and love, uh, the stomach, the large intestine. Now, the lymphoid tissue in the small intestine that we'll be looking at is mostly in the walls of the, the distal small intestine here, the ileum, some in the judginum, so a little bit in the duodenum. Um, so it's mostly in this area here. So when this the bacteria was swallowed as a result of um, swallowing the mucus that we cough up, it goes all the way down and eventually it will get to these uh, immune sites here, these, these uh, so-called pears patches. And they will develop the, uh, the immunity and that they, they'll develop uh, sensitized T cells and that will be sent back to the lungs. So what happens is we have this overall process here. So we have the lungs basically sending uh, the bacteria. Uh, okay, it's coughed up. It's coughed up here, goes down here. So it's coughed up here, goes down into the uh, esophagus. Uh, and that goes to these pears patches down here. And then these pears patches here recognise the bacterial threat. They generate T cells and these T cells go back to the lungs to provide immunity in the lungs in the upper airways. So we have the uh, the lungs sending the bacteria to the intestine, the intestine generating the T cells, and then the immune protection going back to the lungs in the form of these T cells, these T helper cells, lymphocytes, giving immune protection in the lungs. And the reason that some people get very sick and some people don't is varying amounts in COVID, for example, or indeed influenza, uh, is is how resistant they are to that specific um, virus or bacterium, a virus in the case of influenza and COVID, of course. It's how, how resistant they are to that specific one, but also how much of this innate general immunity that they have, which has been stimulated by these T cells going from the lymphoid tissue in the intestine to the lungs to generate more immunity in the lungs and when you've got more immunity in the upper airways all the bacteria are killed in the upper airways and they never get down to the alveoli so hopefully we never get systemically ill so many of you for example will have had covid asymptomatically it's only a minority of people that get sick when there's a failure to compartmentalise the infection in the upper airways and stop it getting down to the lower airways. And that's what Professor Clancy's new development will greatly enhance. This system works naturally, but this new way of stimulating it, just using dead bacteria, no vaccines, no injections, greatly enhances that process. Now, what I'm going to do is run through how this works. Now, it's a bit uh, mechanical, but um, 
it, it will get the message across. So uh, this is the process that works. So bacteria such as Haemophilus influenzae stick to the respiratory mucosa. So we're breathing bacteria in all the time. They stick to the mucosa perfectly. Normal natural defense mechanism. Next thing. Bacteria divide and colonize the mucosa, forming a microbiome. Again, normal. We wouldn't expect the upper airways to be sterile. They're there to protect the sterile lower airways, or hopefully sterile lower airways, but we wouldn't expect the upper airways to be sterile. So we have a microbiome there, which of course is quite acceptable. Um, now, it's, it's only when these bacteria become... Um, uh, when they start to proliferate greatly and take over, causing infection and inflammation that, that we will get sick. So to have some there all the time, of course, is perfectly normal. And this Haemophilus uh, influenzae is, is a common one that is there. So as we know, bacteria are coughed up in the sputum. So <coughs> when we <coughs> cough up and then we um, <coughs> swallow, then we are coughing up the... Uh, sputum with the bacteria that's sticking to it therefore the bacteria are going down into the stomach into the gastrointestinal tract this is part of innate human anatomy this is why this is such a wonderful uh, natural uh, mechanism um, so bacteria coughed up in the sputum uh, sputum is swallowed therefore bacteria are swallowed most bacteria are simply digested in the stomach now we know in the stomach there are digestive enzymes and acid that breaks down most of the bacteria, kills, simply breaks them down the same as it would a sausage or a piece of cheese. But a small percentage make it through to the small intestine. And these bacteria are taken up by this lymphoid tissue in the wall of the small intestine called pears, patches that we drew on this, uh, drew so neatly on this diagram. These are the pears patches here in the wall of the small intestine. Takes up these bacteria, recognizes them as being foreign and uh, proceeds to make an immune response to them. So what is that immune response? Pears patches recognise these bacteria as foreign and pears patches produce a form of T helper cell to combat the infection. But now the T helper cells are, of course are in the gastrointestinal tract whereas the bacterial threat or the viral threat is, is in the lungs. So what it does, these cells are labelled and they travel in the blood to the lungs. So they get from the lungs into the, um, into the gastrointestinal tract by swallowing. They get from the gastrointestinal tract back to the lungs to confer the immune message via the blood, via these T helper lymphocytes. Same group of cells that are uh, diseased actually in, uh, in HIV, AIDS. Uh, that is a disease primarily of the T helper cells, although there's subcategories of T helper cells. Anyway, these newly formed T cells migrate in the blood to the lungs, then into the lung mucosa. That's the, uh, the lining of the lungs that protects us, the mucus that protects us from infection. Here the new T helper cells help the activation of the immune res response, such as the formation of more neutrophils. Now these neutrophils are a form of white blood cell. Uh, now these new, but that they can also patrol the mucus. And there's another type called macrophages. Also a type of white blood cell that patrol the mucus to keep the bugs out. Now, these neutrophils are phagocytic. Phagocytic means to eat. So fa 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 phago-eating cytic cell. They're eating cells. And they literally do that. They literally engulf viruses and bacteria, engulf them into their cytoplasm, pour digestive enzymes on them from their lysozymes and simply digest them and they become a food for the cell. So they're broken up. So a perfectly natural process again. So these neutrophils are, are phagocytic. They eat any foreign material, such as any bacteria and viruses. They are not fussy eaters. They eat anything. They'll just gobble it all up. Gobble, gobble, gobble. If the viruses and bacteria are there, if the, new, if the neutrophils are there, they'll get eaten up. Now the person now enjoys, because of the presence of all these neutrophils that have been stimulated by the T-cells, the person now enjoys learned innate immunity. This new concept that uh, has been developed and Professor Clancy taught us about. As bacteria and viruses are eaten and internally digested in the upper part of the uh, lungs, they're dead. So cannot migrate down to infect the alveoli. So the alveoli are protected by the sheer fact that the neutrophils, stimulated by the T-cells, gobble up all the bacteria and viruses, Therefore, they can't divide. Therefore, they can't make us sick. 
really is that simple. So these um, these bacteria are now dead. The viruses are now dead because they've been eaten up and digested. So they can't migrate down to infect the alveoli and the gaseous exchange structure. So in other words, the infections are dealt with way high up here in the upper airways and never get down here to the lower airways, which are protected so people don't get severely uh, ill. Um, as the alveoli are not infected, they do not become inflamed. Therefore, they do not fill up with inflammatory fluid, leading to what we can call, call a consolidated pneumonia. Consolidated means made solid, because, because the alveoli fill up with fluid, they become solid, and that's a form of pneumonia. Of course, that can kill you. So that doesn't happen because there's no, <laughs> there's no viruses or bacteria left. They've all been gobbled up to cause the pneumonia. Next thing. As the thin-walled alveoli are not infected, the viruses and bacteria are not present, so don't migrate into the, uh, into the blood, leading to systemic illness. So these walls naturally are so thin that if the viruses and bacteria do get down here, if they do get down to the lower parts of the airway, then it's not very far for them to get through, and they do, and that causes systemic illness and things like cytokine storm. So the idea is because they're not there, the person will be protected from these life-threatening conditions. Um, so they don't get systemic illness. Systemic illness means that you feel sick, that you're ill all over, basically. In short, the person stays well. Brilliant, exactly what we want. As the T-cells are very powerful stimulants of inflammation and immunity, we don't want them hanging around for a, lot, for a long time. Therefore, they are short-lived in the lungs. So these T helper cells come along, they give one heck of a boot, one heck of a stimulation to these phagocytic neutrophils, say, come on, get going, get going. The neutrophils really get going. You get a population of neutrophils. That's self-sustaining. They'll hang around for months. But the T cells, because they go around stimulating so much uh, immunity, the T helper cells, the body has designed them only to last for a very short period of time in the lungs. So they come, give this neutrophil macrophage system a really good boot, get it going, get it tip top, but then the T cells themselves just shrink off because they are dangerous uh, cells to have around. Therefore, they're short lived. Brilliant the way that this is all, this is all worked out within the physiology of your lungs. However, the neutrophils that have been stimulated by the T cells, the neutrophils uh, have a the, the, the neutrophils, they have a, a stimulating, self-perpetuating. So the neutrophils actually release a cytokine that causes more neutrophils to be produced. And this goes on over a period of time. And the new, what it basically means is you're protected by neutrophils, probably for about 10 months. So this is long-lived protection. Once they've been booted up by the T-cells, then they'll be there for a period of time. This means the upper airways are patrolled and protected for months after the episode of T cell stimulation by the neutrophils. But we need these T cells to stimulate them first and the T cells would only come along if they've been stimulated by the bacteria in the pears patches that we've swallowed, and the bacteria we've swallowed. As the upper airways are kept clear of virus and bacteria, the lower air airways are protected from descending infection. Now people are always saying, they're always saying to me, well, you know, um, I, I, I was all right, I just had this bit of a cold and then it went to my chest. And then they come and then they've got, they've got significant chest infection. They've got pneumonia. Thousands of times people must have said that to me. Oh, it went to my chest. Well, this stops it going down to the chest, down into the alveoli, because it compartmentalizes it in the upper airway. The bacteria and the viruses are killed in the upper airway before they get down to the lower airway to cause a significant disease. Um, so it prevents this descending infection, this going to the chest. Therefore, infections such as, such as influenza or COVID may present as mild or even asymptomatic, which is what we want. But of course, as we get mild or asymptomatic COVID or influenza, it would also generate another form of immunity called specific acquired immunity, which of course is great as well. But you can get the acquired immunity without being sick because you're protected by the neutrophils. Quite, quite, uh, quite nice the way it works out. Uh, such a protected person is therefore able to compartmentalise the infection in the upper airways, preventing it from descending to the lower airways. They are compartmentalising the infection. Physiologically, this system is protective but imperfect. So it works well 
uh, but not as well as people who were admitted to intensive care with COVID, for example, would have liked it to work. So it's protective, but imperfect. It's an imperfect system. For example, a lot of the bacteria are simply digested in the stomach, meaning they don't get through to the small intestine where the lymphoid tissue in the pears patches is. Therefore, they, uh, they don't get the level of stimulation of T-cells to go to the lungs to stimulate the neutrophils that they would uh, like. It's an imperfect system. And that means it's, it's a prime uh, target, really, for being boosted by a little help from us. Uh, this means some people will be well protected from severe COVID or influenza infection, while others are not. So the ones that are not well protected fail to compartmentalise in the upper airways. Um, now, giving, giving, administering an optimised strain of Haemophilus influenzae as an, what we call an immunobiotic can enhance the uh, efficiency of this natural physiological system. So uh, Professor Clancy's new system is that he brews up huge amounts of these Haemophilus influenzae, kills them, puts them in a tablet, we swallow it. Um, there's a coating around that ta uh, tablet called an enteric coat. That stops it being digested in the stomach, goes straight, straight, straight through to the small intestine. That means large amounts of dead Haemophilus influenzae are presented to the lymphoid tissue, to the pears patches in the small intestine. But even though the bacteria uh, are dead, they still have the same antigens and they are recognised as being foreign by the lymphoid tissue in the pears patches, which will still produce the T-cells, the T-helper cells, which will go off to the lungs to stimulate the immune process, even though it's dead. So it's not going to cause disease in me when I swallow it because it's dead, but it is still containing that uh, antigenic pattern, what immunologists call the epitopes, and uh, that will uh, still stimulate the immune system just as well as if, well, essentially just as well, as if the bacteria were alive. Quite, um, quite a, an amazing augmentation of a simple system. Um, the administration of Haemophilus influenzae is killed, so it can't reproduce and cause disease. Uh, dead organisms cannot reproduce, obviously. The administration of Haemophilus influenzae is enteric coated, so it will be protected as it passes through the stomach, meaning it will reach the small intestine in large numbers. Dead, but in large numbers, therefore we get great stimulation of the immune system by the pears patches, these lymphoid tissue in the wall of the small intestine. This will provide lots of stimulation to pears patches. This is not a vaccination. It's an augmentation of a completely natural physiological system. It's making people that have a slightly imperfect system, it's augmenting that system, thereby boosting their immunity. Very, very simple in essence, um, very simple in essence. So it's not a vaccination, it's an augmentation of a physiological system. So the tablets that the uh, Haemophilus influenzae, the dead Haemophilus influenzae will be uh, taken in, a tablet could probably be taken uh, before every winter, for example, as an over-the-counter medication. It's really hard to see how uh, eating a few bacteria is going to have any uh, significant side effects. So it could, could be an over-the-counter medication. You could just think, oh, I don't want my bronchitis to come back. I'll just take one of these tablets and protect myself again for the next 10 months or the next year or whatever it is. The, the strategy will probably have to be optimised. People that are prone to a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease might need uh, to take a tablet three, four times a year. The rest of us, um, I, I would love to take one before every winter, as soon as they become available. That's what I plan on uh, doing. Um, millions of acute exacerbations. Uh, so the exacerbations are when the infection goes to the lungs and people get very sick, basically. Uh, could be prevented. We don't want it going to the chest. We could prevent millions of cases. Now, um, uh, just to, until recently, I worked on an A&E department and every winter we get in what we call exacerbations of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, about 10 a shift. This is so common. If you go to the medical wards in any hospital in the UK in winter, probably about 25% oh, of the patients are there with bronchitis or lung-related problems. This could prevent thousands of these admissions it could save millions of lives and it could also um, mean that the virus that's causing the next pandemic is not going to cause severe disease because that virus will be eradicated in the upper parts of the airway by simply giving an over-the-counter medication swallow it 
The tablet would be very low cost. Uh, it's just an over-the-counter medication. Why should it cost much? Bugs cost very little to brew up. It's very safe because it's just dead bugs. This um, this could be a completely revolutionary treatment. It's dirt cheap, so um, you can't really expect the pharmaceutical industry to be um, particularly interested. My main concern is that uh, vested interest may try to squash what to me is a potential benefit to all humankind. So that's how that works. Um, absolutely brilliant. Watch this channel for more news. And uh, if you've got to the end of this, uh, thank you for watching. It is an amazing physiological process that we already have. Part of this amazing design, this innate and uh, acquired immunity that we have just simply as a result of being human. Uh, many animals have a very similar system. But it's in imperfect and we can augment it and we can bring the, those with the crummiest uh, response, if you like, the non-compartmentalizers, we can bring them into the same category uh, as the people that compartmentalize best and have the best functioning immune system here. We can equal the playing field by levelling up to good quality uh, natural immunity. Brilliant. Let's hope it gets done soon. Let's hope these tablets become available soon. Uh, now, Professor Clancy does stress this, is, stress this is not instead of vaccination necessarily. Uh, this could well be as well as vaccination, as long as uh, we get vaccines that we are happy with, of course. Leave it there for now. Don't want to go on to the next topic. Thank you for watching.